Well, good morning, everyone. We are uh, AHA International School. Uh, we're located in uh, in Greensboro, North Carolina. Uh, my name is Odette Kraus. I'm director of international director of admission at uh, AHA International School. I have uh, more than 15 years of uh, higher education and boarding school experience, and I was an international school my, international student myself. So I'm very, very excited and very, very passionate working with uh, with international students. AHA International School is located uh, right over here, uh, which arriving to, to our school by plane from, from Turkey probably will be most easier if you fly to Washington, D.C., or you fly to Atlanta. From there, you can take another short, quick flight of 45 minutes, and the local airport is, is GSO, and that makes the arrival to the campus uh, a very, very easy uh, kind of an experience. We also do have connections to Miami. Miami is 1.5 hours away from our school, um, as well as some connections to New York, uh, which is probably closer to two hours uh, away from our campus. We're located in the city of uh, Greensboro, North Carolina, which is the third largest city in North Carolina with approximately 270,000 people, followed by Charlotte, which is the largest city, uh, which is an hour and a half away, and the capital, Raleigh, which is probably one hour away from our campus. A very interesting fact about our, uh, our city of Greensboro, uh, not too many people know that, uh, but uh, way back, going back to the early 1900s, uh, Greensboro was really, really known for the tobacco uh, industry that took place in the area, and the, the employees in the tobacco fields were looking for some really unique kind of uh, uh, clothing that they can wear, and uh, there was a guy by the name of Moses Cohn, who actually invented the denim, the denim jeans. So he invented the material. Later on, he sent it to, uh, to Levi Strauss from the Levi's company, and the rest is history. Uh, but the denim jeans was actually invented in Greensboro, North Carolina. Currently, we have uh, students from 38 different countries and growing. We're definitely looking to make some strides in Turkey, Africa, and Asia to increase some of the student population that we have. So what does the school, our school actually has to offer? So we are uh, an elite college prep boarding school. So we're looking for grades of 9 to 12, which translate to uh, ages of 14 to 19. We offer very rigorous uh, academic program that are combined with early college, AP, pre-professional courses, while the students can play sports, participate in arts, and a lot of different extracurricular activities. We do have uh, probably one of the most amazing campuses in the United States with a private lake, very small class sizes, a very unique teaching methodology. I'm going to talk about that one in a moment. We offer a free ESL program to all of our international students. And I think from a parent perspective, when it comes to return on investment, 90% of our students made it to the top 100 universities in the United States, and the, the remaining 10% went back to the home countries to complete their education over there. So when taking a look on our campus, this is an aerial shot of our campus, and I will actually draw the line so you can see the perimeter of our campus and get a better understanding of what we have to offer. <clears throat> so that's the whole campus right over here, including uh, a 22-acre private lake. This is our boathouse. Over here, you can see all of the dormitories. This is the dining hall facilities. This is the first academic building, the second academic building. And over here, <clears throat> you have the largest building on campus, which is our athletic facilities. And what's really unique about our school, um, a lot of the boarding school in the United States are kind of in a remote location. That's not the case for our school. We're located right in city center. Um, 10 minutes this way will put you at the airport. 10 minutes this way will actually will put you in, in downtown Greensboro. And over here, I don't know if you can see those houses here. We're located in probably one of the most expensive neighborhoods in the area. And students can actually walk from here anywhere between five to 10 minutes. And that will put them um, right in the middle of a beautiful shopping center that offer all sorts of dining and uh, shopping options for, for the students. <coughs> Excuse me. In terms of our mission statement, um, we're looking obviously for good students, but more importantly, we're looking for students who are globally minded. We really care about the life of others. So yes, academics is probably the most important thing that we have to offer. 
At the same time, the students can participate in a lot of extracurricular activities, and we would like to make sure that we educate the whole human being. In terms of our uh, school history, our, our school was opened in 2001, and it was opened as American Hebrew Academy. The school was only open for Jewish students from the United States, and then in 2008, they changed that policy and they allow international students of Jewish faith to enroll into the school. But then last year, the board of directors decided to change the mission of the school. And now we are AHA International School. We open for all students of all backgrounds, of all religions. So everyone is welcome to apply um, to the school. We're taking a look at this picture. I'm pretty sure for the, some of the parents in the room, maybe for some of the students, um, not much have changed. These pictures were taken back in 1956. So 70 years and most of the classroom still looks uh, very identical to what was uh, there in the past. But when you're taking a look on our classroom, um, and it doesn't matter if you're studying English, you're studying math, or you're studying sciences, every single class will offer this very, very unique table. Some people call it an eggplant, some people can call it uh, an eye drop, but this table cannot accommodate more than 12 students per class. That's the maximum it can take. Not like in this classroom over here, when if you didn't do your homework, you can sit in the back and hide. Over here, if you didn't do your assignment, everyone will know it very, very quick. So our students have to be prepared every single day to do the work, to speak about homework, um, so they have to be on the A game every single day. The other unique thing of this, this place is that the teacher has a direct eyesight with every student, but every student can also see uh, each other. We pay a lot of uh, attention to advising, so the teachers are playing a significant role in that, both professional and academic advising, to make sure that they're getting the most out of the educational experience. <coughs> Excuse me. Over here, you can see um, the academic plaza featuring the two main academic buildings that, that we have. And this is the athletic center. So when it comes to equipment, we have a one-to-one -one ratio. When it comes to computers and uh, microscopes, we actually provide students with laptop computers as a part of our tuition. We really want to make sure that all of our students have access to that, access, to that equipment while they're still students at the, the high school. So by the time they attend college or university, they've been exposed to that equipment and they know exactly what they're doing. This is an example of a $1.5 million um, hydroponic lab that we have on campus. So uh, a lot of students don't know what the future of agriculture holds. And if we know that in the past, when it comes to agriculture, farmers were driving tractors and such, in the future, um, Farmers can drive Lamborghinis and Ferraris because they can open it right in the middle of the city. So our students with a little bit, <clears throat> a little bit of um, water and a little bit of light, they can grow some of the most magnificent um, organic food that the later can be consumed in, in our dining hall. So students learning about modern agriculture, environmental science, sustainability, and how we can incorporate that with technology and that's really the future of, uh, of agriculture. Over here, you can see um, our Dream Lab makerspace where our students have access to 3D printing, a robotic team, um, electric circuits, sound engineering, so a lot of way to get involved and really practice what they learn inside the classrooms. As I mentioned before, uh, we do provide uh, English for a uh, speaker of other language and it's included in our tuition. So for students who are looking to enroll into 9th and 10th grade, we're looking for a TOEFL of 51, IELTS of 5, and Duolingo of 80. For students who are looking to enroll into 11th and 12th grade, we will look for a TOEFL of 80, IELTS of 6.5, and a Duolingo of 105. If you don't have those, you're more than welcome to enroll into our ESL program. There will be no B academic classes, but then you can continue with the rest of your academic program. When it comes to, um, to experiments and some of the things that we do, a lot of schools are talking about science, technology, engineering, and math. We changed the STEM into STEAM, and we added art into that. So I'm pretty sure that all of you have some sort of uh, smart cell phone right now. 
And if we stop and think about it, way back when, Stephen Jobs took two existing technologies. One of them was the cell phone, and the other one was the touchscreen. And he put them together, and he changed the world as we know it. And this is really what we would like our students to do and think. We'd like them to think outside of the box, do a lot of things differently, and that's why incorporated art into everything that we do. When it comes to um, some of the uh, additional activities that students can pl pl play and participate on campus, we do have a very competitive athletic uh, program. Over here you can see uh, the basketball court, but we also offer volleyball. Um, we do have an Olympic heated swimming pool right in the middle of the campus. Um, and then we have options in the area of soccer, lacrosse, field hockey. Because we're located in North Carolina, uh, the weather is usually very, very good. Students can play four seasons, and we also have the lights where they can play and practice uh, into the nighttime as well. We even have our own climbing rock right in the middle of the campus as well. When it comes to the residential housing portion of the campus, each one of those uh, facilities over here, it's a residential house or a dorm, and each one of those can hold anywhere between 16 to 18 students. When you're taking a closer look on some of those uh, dorms, you can see that um, students will typically live here on the first floor. And then on the second floor, that's where they will have study halls, uh, lounges, playrooms. And each one of those houses <clears throat> offer um, a house parent, an assistant house parent, that really serving as a mom and dad for the students while they're away from home. Yes, they will make sure that they're doing homework and they're doing well academically, but also that they're eating well, they're taking showers. We're still talking about young kids and we wanna make sure that they're treating accordingly. When you take a look on our uh, rooms inside, inside the dorms, all of the rooms were built around the same time. So all of them are very, very identical, featuring those very, very big windows. And we're looking at two students per room. Uh, we provide all the equipment in the room, going all the way from the dresser to the chair, the closet, the bed, so we provide everything. When you take a look on the distance between the beds, or you take a look on the distance between the, the tables, desk, you will realize that our room are 30% larger than any typical boarding school, and in some cases, even college and university. We would like to make sure that our students are feeling very, very comfortable on our campus, um, and especially when they have their own rooms. Even before this whole COVID-19 situation and pandemic started, um, we put a lot of emphasis on health and wellness. We do have a very sophisticated health center right in the middle of the campus that can provide all the needs that a student might need from um, sending them to the doctors, give them some indication if necessary. And then five minutes away from us, we have a hospital. God forbid something happen. Um, we can take the students to the hospital. The students will never walk alone. We will always take them with us to the hospital. With this whole COVID situation right now, we're able to do isolation, we'll be able to do quarantine, all of those things available within the health center. A lot of opportunities um, outside to, uh, to get involved in, in art, drama, um, visual and performing arts, clay, but students can definitely go and take some selling classes uh, on our private lake. There's a lot of opportunities. You can actually take a kayak and just relax on the lake. You can see the boathouse here again. But in the background, you can also see the dorms. So some of the dorms come with some unbelievable lake views. In terms of the dining pavilion, um, we, uh, we serve here breakfast, lunch, and dinner every single day. Since we are an international school, uh, we try to provide as many international options as possible um, and really try to, uh, to give different variety of foods. A lot of opportunities to participate in extracurricular activities. Here is a picture of some of the students participating in the local town fair. Uh, scuba diving um, options in, in our pool, taking a class trip to Washington, D.C. So there's really a lot of different things that the students can participate at. Um, this is probably one of the most uh, important slides in this whole presentation. I'm pretty sure that for the parents, uh, safety and security is the number one thing when deciding where to send your students. So we do have a 24-7 armed security staff, and our campus is gated and close to the general public. So if you don't have any business in our school, you cannot enter. For the 20-something years that the school has been in operation, we never had any uh, security challenge, and we would like to keep it that way so we keep safety and security uh, to the maximum. 
<clears throat> when it comes to uh, to protecting the environment, we do have a geothermal center on campus that provides uh, the vast majority of energy to our school. Um, and as a result of that, we save approximately $300,000 per year on our energy costs, and that money later on can go towards scholarships and financial aid. Within our campus, we have a lot of wildlife. Um, as you can see over here, we have a deer, foxes, a lot of squirrels, a lot of birds. So uh, it really uh, a sanctuary for those animals and they become a part of our community. When it comes to our college acceptance and where are students actually attending after they graduate from our high school, you can see um, Harvard, you can see NYU, you can see Princeton, but there are a lot of other institutions, for example, in, in Mexico, Canada, as well as Spain, where students actually can go after they graduate. Um, so we created a few very, very unique programs that make our school very, very different than a lot of other high school or boarding school in the United States. <clears throat> the first program is what we call the early college program, where we collaborate with five of the local colleges in the area, where students can take probably anywhere from a semester up to one year worth of college credits through one of those programs. Now, this this credits are still while students are in high school they will take the classes in some of the local colleges and universities and they will have a transcript from that university and while we understand that sometimes not all the credits will transfer towards your bachelor degree that will allow the students to um, do a double major it will allow them for an extended internship will allow for extended study abroad opportunities but what we found that the students are actually using the early college credits the most is to get prepared for their graduate work. So if they're interested in, in law, medicine, MBA, accounting, they're actually getting some of the groundwork uh, ready while they are taking advantage of those credits. The second and third thing that we created is what we call um, the career pathway as well as a resume driven curriculum. So as you can see here on the slide, we do um, provide students with nine different career pathways that they can choose from, from the area of business, pre-law, pre-med. We do have art if students are interested in that, education, science, technology, engineering, and math, public policy, environmental science and sustainability, just to name a few. What we're trying to accomplish is to provide the students with an opportunity to do an internship and externship while they're still in the high school level. And while they do that, to try to identify what is it that they would like to study in college. Because let's be very, very honest. How do you know what you want to study if you never try? And we will give you that opportunity. So once you identify what is it that you would like to study in a college or university, now we can make the whole college search process based on the major that you would like to study versus where would you like to go to college. So for example, if you're interested in mathematics or economics, Princeton is much better than Harvard. And we would like our students to think that way and identify the best academic program that will allow them to get the most out of their education. The last piece that we offer is what we call um, a resume-driven curriculum. Every student will graduate from a high school not only with a high school diploma, but also with a resume, featuring the research, internship, community service, leadership, sports. Um, so if you're planning to apply to some of the top elite schools, colleges, and universities, that resume can make the difference when you submit your application. <clears throat> Here's an example of some of the uh, accreditation and affiliation that we have. We actually just won the national honors for top STEM program uh, in uh, United States high schools. When it comes to um, the options for enrollment, if a student would like to get a diploma, an American high school diploma from our school, we're looking for a minimum of two years. We do have a one-year exchange program. We do have a six-month exchange program. Uh, we also have a postgraduate gap year. For students who might graduate from a high school in Turkey, and now they're looking to improve their English or improve their grades, so that's definitely something that we can help with. And as I mentioned before, we also have the ESL program. In terms of our tuition, um, we decided to, uh, to adopt an all-inclusive tuition model. 
And what you see here is the cost per year, and that's include everything, including all academic program, your ESL, extracurricular activities, ground transportation, airport transfer. Um, I spoke about computers, so we provide computers. The only thing that is not included is your travel. Uh, uniform is not included. We do have a medical insurance that is required and an international fee. I think based on this pandemic, one of the most important thing to remember is that financial aid and scholarships are available and we will try to help in any way that, uh, that we can. So I encourage you to take, a, to take a picture of this slide over here. This is me. Um, and you have all of my contact information over here. So if I can uh, answer any questions in this process, I'll be more than happy to do so. Um, this is the presentation that I have. I'm going to stop right now and be more than happy to answer any, uh, any questions that you might have.